Yay, algae video. Uh, I've been a bad algae daddy, and I haven't, I've been eating algae, and I haven't made a, a video helping people with their algae setup, so I'm going to make uh, four points um, to help help you guys out. Um, one is the medium for the algae, and then the setting up the air pump, then setting up a heater and temperature control, and then feeding. So here we have two tanks. Uh, this one has been going, feeding me for about four months, and uh, is going strong. It looks good. And this one is a new tank, and I'm preparing the medium. Uh, both run from this air pump right here. I got it at a, at a pet store in the aquarium department. It is a Tetra Whisper 100. Uh, it runs on 4.7 watts, which is excellent. So that's running off that solar setup right there. So uh, starting the medium. This is tap water. Tap water is really good because once you remove the chlorine, it has minerals in it. Uh, and you're going to use this medium for about six months at a time before changing it. So it's, it's good to start out right. Um, the way I remove the chlorine is just let this sit um, uh, in any container exposed to air for four or five days and the chlorine will just evaporate out. Uh, there is a lot of chlorine in the, our local water, so, so it's necessary to do that. It's not necessary to have the, the bubbles going, but since these, uh, this, this air pump puts out the same regardless, uh, I'm not going to save any electricity by, by uh, keeping it out of there, so I figured that would help prepare the medium. So this is just water now, and when, after four or five days goes by, I'm going to put sodium, uh, sodium bicarbonate, baking soda, in this. Uh, I forget how much. It's going to be, for that, that's about seven, six or seven gallons. It's going to be about two cups of baking soda. Uh, but uh, there's an actual ratio in my record somewhere. And the, uh, the air pump, uh, the tube is goes into this thing because I had it, but anything that will hold it down is good. This In this tank over here, it's just tied to a rock. So, uh, so yeah, so in, in a few days, I'm going to add the baking soda to this whole thing. Uh, and also some salt, just a little bit of salt. And then the medium will be ready for algae. Uh, but if I put algae straight in here, it would be too diluted and it would die. So what I'm going to do is just take this water and add it over here until this is full. I'll put it a little bit at a time, you know, this much at a time, until the density of algae grows up into it and then I grow it up to here and then I'll put this into the remaining water over here. Then I'll have two tanks of full density algae. So that's medium, um, uh, then that's the air pump. Over here, like I said, this tube that goes in, just like over there, except this is just tied to a rock. There's no, there's no fancy bubbler thing. All that does is spread out the air bubbles. Totally not necessary. It's actually going to be a bitch to clean when that has algae in it, and I might just end up throwing it away. But for now, it's just there. 
Okay, the other essential thing is temperature control. So, on this tank, I have every different thermometer strip that I could get uh, just because it's important and I wanted to test them. This one's by far the best because it goes from 70 degrees all the way to 110 degrees. Algae dies at, a, at about 103 degrees, but it grows the fastest at 95 degrees. So this one does pretty good until 93 degrees and then it doesn't go any further. So well, on hot days you don't know if your algae is going to die or not. Um, so that's only half useful. And, and then this one down here is just like 83 degrees to 93 degrees. So this is not that useful, but they're good to check against this one um, so that I know that this is correct. Um, so now, with the temperature changing, it's time to use heaters. So here's my heater. It's there's This is a 100 watt heater. And this one is a smaller uh, 20 watt heater. Uh, the 100 watt is way more expensive, but it has a dial on it. You can see the dial right there. That's cool. Um, this one heats way better, but it also can get too hot, and I don't want to burn the algae. So, really impossible with a heater like this to get it up to 95 without burning the algae, because when you set this high, the surface of the heater is actually hotter than the setting. It's actually too hot to touch, and that means it's killing all the algae cells that touch it, so I don't like to do that. Uh, so I set it really low. Um, Algae grows best at 95 degrees. Uh, lately, it's been 80, so it's growing more slowly. What I'm gonna do is make like a solar collector to reflect sunlight in back of the tank here. And, you know, it'll reflect from the sides and put it on the back and I'll paint the back black. And that should bring that up. The whole, the whole glass will get warm and hopefully more gently warm it all through the winter. And that's great too, because it won't use any power and it'll just work in the day, because algae likes to be cool at night. So you can use these heaters with a timer, um, which is just tricky uh, to work out and expensive. Or you can try, try to do like I'm doing the solar collector. So I'll put a mirror on this side, a mirror on this side, mirror on the right and left, angled like this paint this black. Uh, okay, so that's temperature. You don't have to worry about it getting cold, it'll just slow down the growth. You do have to worry about it getting hot. If it's over 103 once, one time, then all the algae will die. So that's good. You gotta be really careful. Okay, so that covers the medium, the temperature control, the air. Um, really all you need for the air is is, a, is something that stirs the algae constantly. It doesn't have to be air bubbles, although it does benefit from the air. Um, that's why we do it, it's best, but really just a paddle wheel, turning it around is enough. Anything that that's constantly stirs the algae is, is enough. And if you don't even have that, you can stir the algae by hand as much as you can every day, like six, six times, 10 times a day, but it won't be as good as this because the algae will tend to clump up. Um, oh yeah, it's also good to put the put whatever it is close to the middle um, and close to the edge because if it's close to the edge that'll help keep the edges clear because the algae will tend to stick to the edge and um, if it's in the middle it'll stir more evenly. There's, there's the thermometer on this one which only has one thermometer and it's up really high so it's not going to make, really make contact with the medium unless the medium's all the way up so that's why I put them down here okay so feeding the algae when when you first make a mix uh, you're going to feed it less because the algae will be less dense you'll, you'll 
inoculate the medium with algae or you're diluting the algae that's already going, so I'll feed it less when it's like that. If I was to add algae to this from a small sample, I would have to use mason jars and start small, doubling it every time and just build it up to this. Uh, so feeding is going to be very tiny. Um, you can use any plant fertilizer, any organic plant fertilizer, because you're going to be eating this. Uh, compost tea is a good one. You make really good compost tea and filter it very well, then that works well. Uh, and urea works even better, and that's what I use. Um, and all you have to do to use urea is put a little in a mason jar. Um, I usually put about one ounce for every 10 gallons per day that it's growing strong. If it's growing weekly, then do it once every three or four days. Uh, if you're going away for a while, just once a week. That, that's plenty to keep it alive. Even once every two weeks would keep it from, from getting bad. Um, so if anything stunts the growth of the algae, you slow down the food. Because uh, you don't want the food to build up in there. If the, the growth is regular, then feed it regular. Um, so yeah, I put some fertilizer in here. Put one ounce directly in there a day. Pour the excess out on the hay. Uh, this is uh, regular nails, not galvanized, just iron. You know, uh, get whatever uh, source of pure steel you can. And um, and put it in a jar with some vinegar, and just leave it there. And it makes this really black liquid, and that's uh, colloidal iron. That's iron in suspension. So um, you could use railroad spikes or nails or whatever, as long as it's not galvanized, because that has nasty stuff on it. So. Also, um, that covers feeding. Feeding is really easy. Shouldn't cost you any money. Uh, ah. So, you also want to go in there with a strainer every day and strain out anything that fell into it. And it's good to keep it covered. This is a nice cover. It's glass. So it keeps less stuff in there. This is just a mesh cover to keep big things out but nothing can grow in there because the alkalinity is 11 so you're safe but um, harvesting it with harvest it with this cloth it's a silk screen cloth that helps keep it clean harvesting every day because it filters the medium okay that's it thank you